seven years on the best thing we've ever put in place um, for all my clients, people we've worked with. This has been the one thing that's made the biggest difference of all. Of all the, you know, probably dozens and dozens of strategies we've used to grow practices and so on. But what you're going to take away from today's training is I'm going to describe this practice model you need to adopt and the strategy behind it to allow a six or seven figure income without you working your butt off, right? Because most of you are working with a, a, a paradigm that doesn't allow for a lot of uh, money for time leverage. And second, I'm going to show you this number one strategy as a follow on from that, that will give you instant authority with an audience, um, help as many people as possible and uh, can and has done and will do for you, create a waiting list of new patients, the right type of patients in your practice. And at the end, I'm going to show you is a bonus section at the end here that um, we've come across recently that'll show you how to get this massive amount of leverage in this sort of lock and load methodology of putting in place what I've told you today. So there's a um, a piece right at the end. If you stick around, I'm going to show you that piece right at the end. Um, straight off, there's two big mistakes I want to point out that people in natural health or in, in health generally, I should say, uh, tend to make and I wish you would avoid. And one of them is if you think about how many dollars you've spent over the years and the time you've spent in seminars and workshops upskilling as a practitioner. And yet most people, so you, you know, most people got letters after their name longer than I can even understand. And yet, you ask them how much time they spend on their business or their practice growth, and they say none. So the best thing you can do, in my opinion, is actually spend some time as a practice owner uh, building your business and, and studying your craft. So good on you for being here. I want to recognize everyone who's done that today. Um, and secondly, it's getting some support to help attain your business practice goals because you know people spend so much time struggling along on their own, and by nature, most of you are fairly isolated in practice. Uh, the fact you can come together and also get support from people like yourself and others who've been there and done it before um, is a, a big one to take on board ongoing. A couple of assumptions behind this training. One is um, I'm going to talk a bit about money, making money and everything else. And in health, that tends to be a dirty word. Um, the assumption I'm making that everyone here has a complete ethical viewpoint around making money and doing the right things by their patients and those two things sitting nicely together. So this is about patients first. Um, and the practice builds as a result of ethical practice. Um, secondly, this is a roadmap. So it's going to give you an hour's worth of content to give you an overview of what you need to do. You'll still need to go and implement it yourself and you'll still need to go and make stuff happen. So that, you know, this doesn't shift unless you change things as a result of this information you take on. Um, and just from a strategic point of view, we're going to do questions right at the end. I'll stick around after the, the hour's up because there's a lot of content. We're going to go quick, uh, but I'll answer all your questions at the end. So write questions down as you go and we'll go into them in detail for you. I'll spend as much time as necessary at the end. So a uh, quick uh, snapshot of who I am. Uh, this is a photo of me about 20 odd something years ago. Uh, I was in the gym business. I was a bodybuilder, as you can see, and I was madly keen on this whole business, and I had so much passion for the, for the gym game and for lifting weights. And I'll show this photo because I was so proud of what I achieved in those days, and everyone just laughs at my haircut now, back in the old days. Um, but look, what happened for me was I spent nearly 17 years doing something I loved and eventually it turned into burnout, boredom and really it was, it turned into resentment because I was working so long hours and putting so much of myself into it and I couldn't see a way forward. And it wasn't until I got out of the gym business and started approaching, um, taking on board the strategy I'm showing you today for myself and started doing what I now do, that things dramatically shifted around for me. And in that time, I've sort of done it myself and shown hundreds of other practitioners like these guys how to do it too. And here's what I'm going to show you the same. So we're kind of distilling, I guess, 11 years of wisdom into an hour's worth of you know, hard-hitting content here. Um, what it's allowed me is to live in Byron Bay on my beautiful farm with um, my family. People ask me what we grow on the farm, and at the moment it's primarily we, we raise little girls. As you can see there. So it gives this strategy has allowed me personally and can allow you all the time you need for the stuff that's important to you outside of just being in practice. Because most of us work far too hard just making a living, trying to attain the things we want and then don't have the time to actually enjoy them. So this is, uh, you know, for, as a practitioner, I believe that the more rested and the more balanced you are, the better you are for your patients. So let's put your practice model in place that actually supports that. Um, I've had a mission over the years to create a shift in the, the, the culture of, you know, in Australia particularly around how we view and consume health services. And I think personal responsibility has been the lacking, the one thing that's lacked in that. Um, I believe 
private health practitioners like you guys who are, you know, on purpose, have great practices, have, you know, you're prosperous and you embrace leadership, that's where things shift and that's where the change will come from. That's going to create the tipping point. So I've, that's kind of been my background mission all the time I've been working with health practitioners. Um, just in context, again, I've been working with guys in the last few years now, my coaching fee, this is one of my coaching application forms, it's been around the 30 grand mark uh, and upwards for, for clients to work with over 12 months. Um, and that has had some, it's restricted a lot of uh, impact I can make because it's a lot of practitioners just simply can't afford that. So I've got a new opportunity to partner up and pursue this tipping point goal um, with me. And I'll tell you about that right at the end, but there's a personal challenge in it to make an extra 15 grand in the next three months exactly as a result of what you learn here today. So more at the end for those who are intrigued by that. So let's get into the content. So let's look first up at what I call the, the, the health practitioner career trap, which is um, really, well, put it this way, if you want to make a million bucks as a health practitioner, the typical question most people say is, well, how do I get more clients to do that? And if you're charging, say, 100 bucks a consult or a certain number you personally charge, um, that's going to need 10,000 clients a year to get your million dollar turnover. So 200 clients a week for 50 weeks, which, you know, if you're a single, if you're a single practitioner or a sole trader, uh, that's not a lifestyle that I'd want to take on for myself. I wouldn't want you to do it. And I certainly don't want to be client number 199 on your, um, in your 49th week of straight work because I know I won't get the best of you. On the other hand, well, you know, this is what happens is the harder you work, less value you can offer each patient, the quicker you approach burnout. And I've worked so many times with practitioners at the end of their careers, and they just simply are burnt out. They love what they do, but they're like, Jesus, is there any other way to do this? I'm exhausted. And it's not your fault, because what you're working to is the paradigm or the business model that everyone else has worked to for years, and there hasn't been a lot of other opportunities to learn a new way of doing it otherwise. So... I've come into the industry and said, well, how do we do this differently? If we're going to make a million bucks, for example, how, rather than sort of how do we make more patients, how can we be worth more to a patient? If you, if you were seeing $1,000 a patient, you don't need 1,000 clients a year, which is 20 clients a week, which is obviously more doable. The question, of course, is, well, how do you be worth $1,000 a patient and still be of an exceptional value to that person? And the answer is uh, all about little blue men running around the forest, avatars, and creating a signature protocol. Now, let me explain. Uh, it's not really about avatars, but we're going to use the term your avatar client. Now, why, the reasons your marketing may not be working currently is that you're likely to be advertising your modality. And what you need to be doing is advertising the benefits of your modality. And typically, too, what I see is people try to appeal to a general audience. So they say, well, I can, you know, if I'm putting acupuncture needles in people, I can help all these different types of people with all these different types of uh, um, ailments, and that's what their advertising is based upon. But in fact, we want to find a niche specialty and create what we call an avatar client or an ideal client and start focusing our marketing and our, our messaging on these avatar clients. And you can have more than one, but I want to suggest you might start with one. And I'll give you examples of this, but it starts with looking at who you may have worked with successfully before. Who have you got great results from uh, with and, you know, you feel super confident in helping. You also want to make sure you enjoy doing this kind of work and helping them achieve these things and making sure that the people, the answer to those two questions matches up with this last one, which is you want to start working with a typical client who's got a track record of spending time, money and effort trying to get better. So in other words, if they don't want to get better, just because you can help them doesn't make any difference, right? They need to want it for themselves and they have to have a, a track record of, you know, putting time and effort towards that. And we're gonna, I'm going to suggest we find a problem they've got or help them identify their problem and identify it as a $10,000 or more problem. And the reason we do that, well, let's, let's look at how we do that first. So first up, if an avatar's got a $10,000 problem, that might seem like a lot of money in health, but if you think about and I you describe your avatar's problem in detail. And I say it's a, uh, a, a chippy or a laborer or a, a builder who has got, you know, chronically bad back. Now, you could describe their problem in detail, but it's probably going to quantify, you could quantify their problem by saying, look, it's got, there's a cost to it because he's, he's taking time off work. Um, he's making, uh, he, you know, he's cutting, he's, he's cutting his hours back at work. He can't do the work he needs to do. Uh, it's hurting him all day, he's not enjoying himself, he's grumpy with his kids, 
there's an emotional impact and a frustration there. He doesn't like going home because he's, he's got to drink six beers before he can, he can um, feel normal again. You know, there, and there's a cost to that if nothing stays the same. So this is an, an example of one avatar client. And yours will all be different. But there's a, describe their detail, describe their problem, quantify the problem in the three currencies, time, money, and effort, and then understand the emotional side of what they're going through and project that out. You know, what happens if nothing changes down the track? What happens if nothing changes? Now, we want to target your marketing then to this avatar person and ideally be something to everyone, not um, be everything to someone, I should say, not something to everyone. Right? So really get specific. As an example of this, uh, one of my clients, Charmaine in North Brisbane, up at Albany Creek Way, has resisted like hell. She was doing, she was Banksy, a healing center, and had uh, a generalized client base, but she really loved working with women. She was getting great results with sort of stressed middle-aged women, and she became a women's healing center. And from that point, things just went ballistic for her. Suddenly, she's in a high-profile position, and people started turning up going, that motto you've got on your, on your uh, door there says juggling life, life, overwhelmed, exhausted, you know, become calm, happy and energized and healthy again. People came in and said, that's me. That's the person up there. That's me. I want to help. I want some help. So it started suddenly attracting people almost without effort. And the funny thing was the blokes turned up as well. The, guy, the husband still came along. They still turned up. It didn't exclude the people that she thought she'd lose, which were initially were half a database. Um, that's what her website starts to look like. This is how you apply it. So this is about choosing your niche, right? And again, I'm giving you a really quick overview, but if you're too general, then you're probably not making any sense to anybody and you're relying on someone to, to say, well, you know, if you're an osteo and you say, oh, I'm an osteopath, here, here I am, you're relying on them to understand what you, you can do for them, whereas you need to make it clearer. The second part of this uh, equation here is to introduce a solution for this avatar client, and we call it, uh, and with my clients, we call it a signature treatment protocol or a signature protocol. Um, this is Alex Perry's from the Perry Center. He's an acupuncturist in Canberra. It's all about how to have a baby, and he specializes in pregnancy, obviously, and he's created this you know, whiz-bang sort of infographic to describe it. But yours can be simpler than that. Um, and I've talked about how to do that and what components to put in place. But initially, when I look at, i ask you this, is like what percentage of your people you see needs to see you more than once. Right? And, and typically people say to me, well, nearly all of them, you know, unless you're doing something that fixes them like that, there's normally a, a series of treatments required. But then if you look and do the numbers, you can ask for well, what percentage of your client base actually invests in a number of sessions? How many don't follow through and don't do everything you tell them to do? And normally there's a big disparity between those two numbers. And the question I'd ask then is, well, are, are we really giving patients what they need if that's the case? Like, are they needing more than what you're giving them? Are you shortchanging them? In other words, are you giving them sessions, but what they really need is solutions? Now, I know I'm sort of maybe throwing this as a contentious way to put it, but I want to wake people up maybe to the fact that there's a new way of offering a health service. If, if a solution is a, you know, a protocol, is the way to get someone better, then let's start offering that, not the session, because you're allowing the patient, if you like, to make the decision on how often they get treatment, it's kind of up to you, in my opinion. Now, you know, we know that the majority of patients actually need more than treatment. They actually need um, prescription on lifestyle, and especially for chronic disease stuff. They need to be told how to live life on, on, a, on a few other fronts, not just getting a, um, a treatment with you once every couple of months. It's about maybe getting coaching and help and changing those behaviours and habits. It's also about maybe educating them giving them education and letting them understand more and more about, you know, how to change and what they need to change towards. Um, and guidance, confidence, reassurance is that they're on the right track. They want to be supported on the journey a lot of the way. Uh, and the emotional support that comes along with that. So it's likely you're giving a lot of this away to people anyway, but you're doing it in a, maybe in a fragmented way for those who are, you know, if you're not offering protocols already, it's maybe it's fragmented. Um, and I would argue that people also want to understand the real scope of treatment you're giving them. In other words, if it's going to take more than just one session or two sessions, then it's really important they understand that. Otherwise, you're always trying to, you know, tell them, this, or it's almost like you're always trying to sell them the next session, just come back, come back, come back. But if they don't understand right up front that it's going to take more than just one or two, then 
it's always going to be a hard slog. So it's really important they get that up front. And what happens then is they get this sense of investment and a buy-in with a health outcome, and that increases compliance. And we know that if a patient, you know, depending on your modality, if they're compliant, uh, typically they get better a lot quicker. Um, <clears throat> this is a great saying, and I think it's so true in health and well-being, is that you know, most people are walking around looking for somewhere to plug into. They've just got umbilical cord in hand going, someone help me with this. So I, I want to answer, I want to get better. People, people with you know, problems that have been going on for a long time, they need to trust someone and know who to go to. And why not be that person? Why not stand up and be that person? Because you know, meantime, most practitioners you know, are probably struggling a bit with you know, making a good living. Certainly everyone in the, in the webinar gave me the feedback that you need to make more money and have more patients booked up, better compliance, you know, don't necessarily have a waiting list. Um, and this is a way to do it, it's by offering these protocols. Now look, case study is uh, Peter Mills again, he's a guy up at uh, Centenary Natural Therapies I worked with for many, many years. Switched from doing these $120 consults and started offering restoration programs because he knew that this, this sort of protocol he designed was getting much better results than just seeing people one piecemeal one by one. Um, and results went, just went through the roof for both his clinic and for his, and for his, uh, for his patients. Um, Shell's in Canberra as a naturopath. He's uh, now got direct debits. This is from a few years back now, but you know, direct debits coming through a clinic of $1,000 a week um, for a small practitioner in a single room. And it gives her the chance to travel and do things whilst the patients are still getting what they need from her. She's off having holidays and getting some, some freedom back. Uh, Matt and Sherry out at uh, Gatton as chiropractors, 30% of their practice is pre-booked on protocols now for the year. I think that's grown up because this is a couple of years old, these slides. Uh, Monica went from, you know, startup acupuncturist to a bit, you know, four grand a week and, and onwards. Um, and she cut, she managed using this model, cut her hours, her own hours back by offering protocols while she's having more babies. So she, I think she's now up to two or three kids, but still got the income there. Um, and Charmaine, again, using that, uh, that marketing I just described to you and showed you, took her average sale from $85 to $1,700. And the results she gets from clients and satisfaction, the referrals have just exponentially got bigger. So, and there's Alex Perrys. Um, he's got this fertility program, which is just sort of the most popular thing. If you're having a baby in Canberra, you go and see him. Um, and that can happen so quickly once you introduce it. It's Catherine's uh, Natural Health in Brisbane. Um, and again, you know, it's enrolling, and I'll show you how she enrolled them in a minute, but this signature protocol is the key to it. So it's about having something to enroll them into. The ideal practice that I've worked with people over the years, and the ideal practice we aim for is to have a waiting list of patients, pre-booked, pre-paid every week, so you don't have to worry about the rent, you don't have to worry about, you know, am I going to see patients this week? They're all booked ahead uh, with a few spaces left for new, new patients to come on board. And they're all getting great results because they're all compliant and buying in. They always turn up on time. They never miss sessions. They don't um, stuff you around and you know, not show up. Um, and they buy into their own outcomes. They feel confident with their outcomes. Everyone loves this photo of this fat little chubby kid. <laughs> he's not one of mine, but he's, he's cute. Um, so they get better results, better referrals, better attention. Why don't we offer these levels of care? Why don't we offer these protocols? And if you haven't got this signature treatment protocol or a solution package ready, that's obviously the first thing is have it, create it, and then you can start offering it. You can start experimenting with it. Um, and then secondly, there's a skill set associated with enrolling clients in these solutions. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a trickier conversation up front or, or a different conversation even around how to get people engaged with that. And I'll again talk to you more about that in a moment about how we go about it. <coughs> and if you're not attracting those right sort of people, um, they're not going to want your solution. So uh, you need to get that marketing piece right up front so that they're coming through sort of pre-educated, if you like, about what you can do for them. And then when you introduce the protocol, it doesn't come as some big shock. It actually comes as like, well, this is a, a welcome news about this solution I've been presented with. Um, a good thing about this is it's just a skill. It means you can learn it. It's just something you can learn. So it's something to start, again, take on as a study point, if you like, or a practice point in learn it, study it, <coughs> and figure out how to do it. Don't blunder along when you're on. Now the idea of protocols, <coughs> again, I'm going quickly guys, because I've got a lot of content to cover. And I'll have lots of questions for you, time for questions right at the end. But um, 
the protocols are pretty common. If we think, particularly in the fitness industry, it's a really common thing. Um, you know, we all know this Michelle Bridges, these 12 week challenges, this kind of thing. We don't sign up for a session one by one with Michelle. We go and do this 12 week protocol and she's got a leverage protocol using a combination of delivery methods, which I'll show you too. Now, these are the components you can put into your signature protocol. There's obviously first up your own treatments. You can obviously put, you know, a few treatments, package a few treatments together rather than just one on one, one by one. You can also include information, and that can be like Michelle Bridges does, is this, this sort of a pre-recorded element to it. We can do seminars, live workshops, uh, SMSs, is an accountability uh, education process and coaching process you can build into that as well. Uh, you can include your staff's time or your, your, your associate's time and treatments in it. So you don't, like Peter Mills I showed you before in Centenary, doesn't do a lot of that treatment himself. He actually outsources or gives it to his, his team. You can actually even outsource treatments to people outside of your clinic and bring them in uh, to deliver components of what your, your, your patients need. So you don't even have to have your own staff, you can outsource it. And, and, make, and clip the ticket along the way, obviously, so you still make some money on the treatment. Um, you can do these group consults, which we'll describe at the end. This is this um, shared medical appointment uh, program, which we're going to talk about that John Stevens and Gary Agra have created, which is just a fabulous way to do it. More on that soon. Um, but that creates this group environment that has this sense of community attached that really has been creating some exceptional results and can do the same for your guys. Think about what products or supplements or devices and things you can include into a package. And even special events, like Charmaine does special events at her clinic in North Brisbane and invites all her um, protocol clients along to, um, you know, information nights and have little, you know, champagne and foot spa nights and things like that as a special sort of a wow event because it's, well, in, her, in her case, champagne and foot spas is appropriate for her client base. Um, so consider what your clients are already spending money on anyway and think about it, how you can include that in, in the package so that you become their primary provider, their, their primary healthcare provider. So they're, they're spending money, uh, I'm going to argue that I know that people spend money, they'll go to the physio here, but then they'll go to the health shop there to buy you know, supplements and magnesium oil, and then they'll go get a massage over there, or they might, you know, they're doing other stuff, and they might be spending money online or on retail, but why not you be their, health, their primary provider for their health needs? So signature protocol tips, doesn't have to be your own personal exertion of time. Arguably, you don't have to offer any more single sessions. There's a few of my guys have just said, no, no more singles, it's leverage protocols only. Um, look for high leverage options like these SMAs, the, short, the shared medical appointments I'll talk to you about later. And look at what's ideal for you, but also balance that with what's ideal for the patient. So in other words, just because the patient might want to see you, you know, ring up at eight o'clock at night and see you five times a day, it doesn't mean it's good for you you got to get that balance right of what you're happy to deliver and whilst giving them the best possible outcome within that framework. Um, and you can keep it simple. You know, like you can be, I'll, I'll offer four sessions rather than one, build it up from there. Or if you've got a protocol already that you're already doing, where can you add value to it for your client? So, uh, but the key things is it's got to be seen, you've got to show it to them as a shortcut. Remember there, you know, it's got to be a protocol that might take longer, but it's still a shortcut in terms of achieving a longer term outcome as opposed to you know getting a, a you know a physio session once every six months every time you're in acute pain you might be better off spending three months getting better um, and that's going to give you a shortcut to long lasting wellness and it's got to be a small investment versus big value think about the fact that it's a ten thousand dollar problem you're showing them um, the cost of medication the cost of treatment the cost of um, time off work, the time, the cost, uh, the emotional cost, etc. Is a ten thousand dollar problem there? You've helped identify, and it becomes a small investment in comparison. That's where a thousand dollar investment next to a ten thousand uh, dollar saving on their on their on their problem. Once they understand it's actually costing them that, is actually good value as opposed to um, you know if you just hit them over the head with a thousand dollar fee, they're going to go what the hell. Okay, so <clears throat> and I'll show you again how to. Um, just at the end, I'm going to show you this SMA technology, which is just this beautiful way to sort of hack this whole process and, in, and, and get it working in your clinic immediately within a day. A day of training will make it happen. So I'll tell you about it right at the end. Um, quickly, you might I'll just throw this in because everyone comes to this point and they feel uncomfortable about pushing the client or trying to sell them something and so on. And that's 
completely normal in health particularly, and we want to do the right thing by patients at all time. But, you know, let's just say up front that there's the way we teach this, the way I've been teaching this with my guys all these years is that if both parties, you and the patient, don't feel great about the transaction, in other words, you've got to feel good about it too, um, then it's not a good transaction, you shouldn't do it. And, you know, the patient ideally walks away excited, educated and, and, and informed about this, you know, this protocol I've just enrolled in, finally I'm going to get better, they get excited about it, they feel good about it and then continue to feel even better about it when it starts working for them. So it's, it's win-win or it's nothing. Um, it's a formulaic process and there's no sales pressure included or even required, okay? Uh, right, so these, these are the guys that are doing it. This is, this is, again, the quickest thing that I've done with people. Once they make these things, then I'll show you how to bring people on board next. But once they do this, it just starts going ballistic. Things start shifting so quickly in your practice once you start doing these, pro this, these signature protocols. And your level of personal satisfaction goes through the roof. Um, because you see results of patients rather than sort of wondering if they're going to come back again. So how do you get people to enrol in these signature protocols? Now you create it, you know, once you've got one. The big thing, it's around trust, because they need to, you know, well, A is get your message right, which we talked about, getting your avatar client, all right, and start speaking to that niche in your marketing. But they need to trust you first, but the irony is that as I often, they probably kind of need to know you or meet you first in order to trust you. So there's a bit of a, a chicken and egg situation. But recognise that people make a decision based on emotion, but they'll justify it later with logic. Right? So, you know, you might, this woman goes to the doctor, she goes, oh, I feel this doctor really gets my condition and I feel understood and I'm feeling heard and I felt really good about it. But she'll go home and tell her husband, oh, yeah, sure, well, she's the most qualified person in the field and she's actually quite good value. So, you know, there's a, there's a difference in how we engage with how we justify it. And the, the emotion that, people most need to feel about you is trust. They need to know that you're experienced, they, they can, you know, there's a level of personal safety included in, for, you know, chiropractic and things like that. Is it gonna hurt? Is it, is it gonna injure me? I wanna feel trusting of that and know that if I invest my time and money with you as a practitioner, it's gonna bloody work. I mean, that's the key thing. They need to trust that one thing. People in our society tend to trust experts and those with authority in a given topic, particularly in medicine and health, so the obvious thing here is how to create authority. Um, authority builds trust. Trust will make it safe to engage and full engagement creates compliance for it with your patient and compliance patients get better results as we know. <clears throat> There's five ways you can create more authority. Uh, and what most people do is collect more qualifications or I know I'd say that's Arguably not necessary for many of you. You've probably got a lot of qualifications. You've probably got this level of authority anyway. So it's not the first port of call. It might be necessary, but it's not the first thing I'd suggest. Um, it's more about recognising the authority you already have in a particular area. You know, you've, you've got results with people in the past. You've, you've been successful with this in the past. You can do it again. Recognise that authority, that, that experience. Um, writing a book, I've helped a lot of people do that. It's great, but it's laborious and it works well. You can obviously publish papers, you can be interviewed in the media. The best and easiest thing you can do though, the moment you step on stage and present to an audience, you are inherently seen as an authority or an expert in your area. It's just the two things go hand in hand and you know you don't even need to be one, but you just get assumed to be one straight away. And But I'm not going to suggest you do that. You want to go there and know that you know what you're talking about. Host a webinar is the other option. So this is the key strategy, the number one strategy I've been mentioning is once you've got a signature protocol, get on stage or host a webinar and speak to a group because that is the most best way we know how to be an authority and create trust. It also allows you to help as many people as possible. There's no limit to how many people you put on a webinar generally. Or there's, you know, and this, depending on your software, there might be hundreds, 106 people on this webinar. Um, to, you know, whereas I haven't got the time to speak to you guys one to one. Whereas it also removes resistance to people getting involved with you. Like it's, if they spend a time listening to you and engaging with you in a, in a seminar or a webinar, they'll, they're, they're one step closer to actually enrolling with you in your protocol. Um, and this is a beautiful way to create, like I said, I, I can guarantee if you do this, you'll put 15 grand worth of um, new patients through your door in the next three months or less. And typically less, because if you think about it, if once you create a protocol that's worth a thousand bucks, um, you don't need many patients to start making it worth, uh, you know, for this to start adding up. 
And primarily what I like about this, it doesn't take as much time and effort as seeing people one-on-one. -on -one. In fact, it's the most highly leveraged thing you can possibly do in my opinion. I mentioned in the, one of the emails going out to this, you, you've probably got an unrecognized skill, which is you, you're probably enrolling patients and having these conversations, enrolling people one-to-one -one all day, every day anyway. You're probably doing a really good job of it. You probably maybe just don't recognize that. And if we can take that skill and apply it to a platform, and you've got two platforms to choose from. One's obviously a webinar like we're doing here, or take it onto a stage and put a microphone in your hand, or even uh, running it in, a, in, a, you know, in the back room of your clinic and putting 10 people in front of you, gives you this leverage and the platform is about. So, and so at this point, people go, clench up and go, well, holy shit, you know, like, I, I don't want to be a presenter. I'm, I get scared of that and I've never been good about it in front of a crowd and, and you know, a lot of fear comes off of people and that is true for everyone. I still remember the first presentation I ever did. I was literally sweating like a, uh, a bull and it was, I was terrified <laughs> and I was doing it without training. But the key thing is a few, few misconceptions. Number one is it's, an innate, it's not an innate skill. That's a misconception. Number two is uh, people think they're too shy. And number three is it's all about the speaking. Now, just really quickly here, let's go through this because presenting is not an innate skill. It's not something you're born with. You can learn it and you can learn it and practice it. And the confidence in it comes from receiving guidance, with repetition and effort or following a formula. And that's, like I said, I was sweating like a bull the first time I did it 15, 20 years ago. Um, and by the third or fourth time, I was getting much better at it and I'm really enjoying it and it started to work for me. So second part was um, introverts can become, you know, if you're shy, you don't see yourself as someone who wants to be on stage, introverts can be the most exceptional presenters. Right? These two guys, Charmaine and Peter, are what, definitely call themselves introverted, I would say. They're always nervous about getting on stage. But if you follow, you know, if you have integrity, you follow a formula, have belief and enthusiasm in your, in your offering, and that's the key thing and you get training on how to do it, it gets easy. And um, people respond to authenticity. They don't respond to ego. They, they see through bullshit. So the good news on that is don't let being too shy be your excuse. And there's an argument here that it's just kind of playing small. You know, like if you've got a message you know needs to get out there, saying oh, I'm too shy to put it out is just a bit of a cop out in some ways. And you maybe owe it to your patients or those prospective people who need to know what you know and can be helped by what you do to actually spread the word. And that, this is one, one way to look at it without sort of upsetting people. So, and the third thing is not about the speaking. So this one hour webinar, for example, is not gonna change your life dramatically unless you, um, you can see it as a catalyst. Some of you will take this information and run with it and go and make such a difference with it. Um, and so it's, it's kind of like it's a pivot point. The talk you do, it's not about the speaking, it's how many people actually take action. It's about converting. So this is a pivot point for people to make a change. And this is what your talk can be too. The success of your talk can be measured by how many people take real action as a result of your talk. Not by how clever you were or how, many, how much applause you got. It's how many people put their hand up and say, yes, I want to engage further. And ideally that's going to be with, you know, I can show you that's, um, that becomes your signature protocol. What do they do next? We'll come and engage my signature protocol. We've had an hour together or a couple of hours together in a workshop or a, or a webinar. You then, then offer them the opportunity to get better in a, in a real way. Um, and we all know, we've all done it. We've been read books or attended seminars and gone, oh, that's a great idea, I'll do all that. Or you know, motivational speakers and done nothing further with it. So I'm going to suggest don't do that. Make it about the conversions and get, getting people into action. That's, what, that's, what the, that's the whole point of the thing. Know your audience better than they know themselves. So if you know this avatar client, they need to have a set of beliefs about you in order to engage further. They need to know you've got the authority and experience and trust, um, and they need the trust in you. Uh, they need to have a set of beliefs about themselves. So you need to, to, to help them understand that they can really do this and present them with something they feel they can actually do. And finally, they need to feel, uh, how do they need to feel about your service? In other words, you know, you want them sitting there going, you know, this, this is actually designed for me. This, is, this resonates with me. This is ideal for me. So it's, it's a bit of psychology into it to know your audience. This is the formula for your presentation. <coughs> Speaking so quick, I'm losing my voice. Uh, so the presentation formula. I'll send you this. I'll give you a, a replay of this. So if you haven't got time to write it all down, I'm happy to send you the slides or a PDF of the slides, guys. So don't panic too much if you're not getting all this down, by the way. 
First part of the formula is to start with owning the room. So you've got to really get their attention right up front with a big promise. Um, tell them what you're going to teach them up front and give them a big promise um, so that they go, well, I'm in the right room. You know, I'm on the, I'm on the right, right webinar. It's worth spending my time on. Second of all, get permission for your style. So if you're sort of like you're going to, like me, I tend to swear a bit too much in webinars and seminars. I always tell people that. So look, that's just how we do it. Or if I'm going to go fast, I'll tell them how we do it. But get permission for how you, if you're too quiet, if you're quiet and your voice isn't projecting well, you can, um, you can get permission for that. Tell them that's who you are. Secondly, oh, sorry, lastly, get permission to pitch. Tell them you're going to offer them action to take at the end of it. Tell them right up front and so it doesn't come as a big shock. Number two is you go into what we call your hero story. Now, your hero story is um, either you or a patient. So it's either one of, you know, someone you've helped or your story. You describe the situation, you went through, you go through the problem that in detail and the discoveries you made in order to receive, to get this result. So you get the background of, of why you're doing this and you know, why you're qualified to do it. And typically in health, it's gonna be, this is the patient I work with. And this is what the problem was, this is what they were going through, this is what the protocol we designed for them, and guess what, now they're recovered or they're doing really well. Look at me. So that's the sort of um, the upfront piece. The core of the content or the, the, uh, the bulk of the talk, you're gonna present no more than three pieces of core content. Um, there's, a, there's a saying in seminars, that if you confuse them, you lose them. Uh, and it's always tempting to throw far more information in than, um, than people can absorb, because I'm probably guilty of it here today, because we want to provide value. But three pieces of core content. And each of these core pieces, these core points, each relate to the big promise. And we illustrate them with stories. Now, we, you know, like in, in health, people get carried away trying to, um, you know, if this is a lecture to a, uh, to a conference, then it's a different story. But what I'm talking about is engaging an audience of prospective patients. And they want to hear, people get bored of the lecture, but they'll tune into stories about people, about your experiences. They want to hear case studies and research and proof, but tell them stories. As kids, we all listen to stories. And you can use themes for stories. So here's some of the ones I've used in the past is, you know, here's not what, what not to do is a good thing. You know, this is what you do not definitely do this. Um, another thing might be, well, it's not your fault. Uh, this is, um, I used it earlier when I was talking about your business model. And then, you know, how you go from A to Z, a case study is a good story, or, you know, why doing nothing is not an option. You know, you're pointing out long-term consequences and painting that picture and using that as a theme for your story. So this is the core of the thing. Then you go into what we call the transition, and you move from the teaching and education into uh, smoothly and, and move into this idea of inviting action. It's like, okay, I've taught you this, now what are you gonna do about with this information? And then you go into the course of action you, you advise them to follow, which is typically your signature protocol. Then you make what we call the close, where you make your offer and you, you outline your protocol. You, uh, you address all the risks that are associated with that protocol or the, with making a decision. Um, Typically, you know, we, we can put guarantees in place. Uh, we can put, you know, cooling off periods so people can make a decision, but there's no, you know, they don't have to keep going with it. Um, if there's the risk of, um, you know, what if it doesn't work for me? You can talk about, well, there's 97% of patients I've seen so far this has worked for. Uh, you know, you talk about the risks up front and alleviate them for people as much as possible. Then you give incentives to make it happen today because they're not going to go home no matter even they tell you, I'm going to go home and talk to my wife about it or think about it, blah, blah, blah. It's all bollocks. They will, they need to make a decision today. So you give them the reason to do it today and make it, you know, today's a good day to do it because I'm going to give you incentives to make it that way. And then recap the offer. Now, the key, the biggest people that piece of advice when you do this is don't not do it. It's really easy to leave the clothes out because it's a bit, you know, we're uncomfortable doing it until you get used to it. And it's again where you get some training from someone who's done it many times, like yourself or others. Uh, definitely get the training, learn to do it because it's it's the crucial piece. Don't avoid it. Um, give you some examples of how this is working in in real practices with people I work with, and I've worked with a whole lot of them. These are some of the highlights, I guess. But Peter has been doing you know twenty odd people in a workshop every couple of months. Of those, you'll get about eight or nine people convert to initial consult from the seminar. From those eight or nine, six or seven will convert into a, a from the initial into a protocol. 
at about a fifteen hundred dollar price point each over three months. Uh, the net result, you know, up to around ten grand, and he does it every couple of months. So he's getting new patients through all the time. He's making all his extra money per annum. His his personal exertion on that is only a couple of hours per patient, and the rest of it's delivered by his team. He's got a team of people in his clinic, and really it becomes a question of how often do you want to run this? Because this is, you think about it, if you can go out and stand in front of an audience for an hour and create 10 grand's worth of business and engage, you know, another six to 10 people every time he does it, how many times a week do you want to do that? You're only really limited by uh, geography, in which case you can go to webinars and, you know, it's really, it becomes a, a very high leverage school, which, you know, in, in many cases we have people focusing on doing this rather than doing the actual um, hands-on delivery. Uh, Charmaine again has been doing this whole technique. Uh, she often, she runs little workshops just in her practice, ten people at a time. She'll get you know four or five conversions per every time she runs a workshop, and the average sale is about seventeen hundred dollars. Now you know again every couple of months it's an extra forty grand a year. And the key thing for her is it's given her so much confidence and purpose, and just she's just blossomed and grown and has this absolute um, fire in her belly about her purpose now, which is helping women who are um, you know, worn out and exhausted. And she's now been invited to speak on local radio. She's becoming you know, something of a local celebrity and a champion for the, for the cause. Uh, likewise, Graham Taylor, he's a Cairo in Tari, which is you know, a small town in New South Wales. Um, Graham was a traditional Cairo, still is, but he's moved into an area called applied kinesiology called retained neonatal reflexes, which is all about um, helping kids with learning difficulties and behavior problems. Um, so, you know, he came to me and said, well, how do I get known for such an a, you know, unknown modality in, in a small town? He's nervous about getting on stage and doing it. And um, I said, well, let's just get started. So we applied the formula. Uh, he now runs monthly seminars in his clinic. Um, and he's getting families along all the time. He gets local doctors turn up. He's getting a lot of support from the local uh, community because he offers something so unique. And he's getting this sort of community support as in you know when you create, they all come together and support each other through it so it's got this add-on effect where his practice is seen as this safe haven for families in in need with with prop with problem kids um 30 of his practices now are and r it's retained now no reflexes and he's submitted a paper and been accepted i'm happy to say to speak at the ak international conference 2018 so graham's going worldwide you know he's making an impact worldwide next year from Tari, right? This is a Cairo and Tari, so I'm just so proud of this guy. He's made such a big difference to, to his, his community and to himself and his practices humming along as a result. Looking at the time, we're running short here, but I'm gonna tell you, look, presenting can quickly, it can turn into signature, your, pre, your, your signature protocol can turn into valuable intellectual property. And this is an example here. You've got uh, a guy I worked with many years ago. Some of you have known Michael, he's a physio in Brisbane. Um, long story short, I got him on stage, started presenting, and he started talking about his um, RID, what, what is now known as the Ridgeway method, which was his own methodology of treating people, his own signature protocol. Long story short is that we got, we started putting him in front of other physios, and it was so successful in his own practice the way he did this that he is now training hundreds of other physios all over the country, and has a, a completely separate business other than being a practitioner in. Uh, training and uh, people into his signature protocol, other physios to follow his system. So it's created a, a massive stream of income for him, massive change across the industry. Um, he's won a number of awards of the APA and he's just a really, um, he's a, a groundbreaking individual. Likewise, Martin Harris, a guy I've worked with many years now in, in New Zealand and a good mate of mine, he's, I helped him write a book all about uh, optimal prescription health. So how to balance prescription medicine with complementary medicine. He, uh, was working non-stop in his one pharmacy, you know, all hours of the week, and is now, with putting this signature protocol in place in a retail setting, has created a um, piece of intellectual property, which he then trains other uh, pharmacists in. He now has over 70 pharmacists all over the country, in New Zealand, following his protocols in their, in their pharmacies, and converting and helping patients make good decisions around their health. Um, so again, Extra streams of income, but also extra levels of impact. This is all possible for everybody. So quick, uh, obvious question here is, where the hell do you find an audience? 
because it's all right to say here, gun makes protocols and speak from stage. Well, where do you, who, who to? Uh, where do you speak from stage to? The first one is obviously go back to your own database. So look at who you, who's on your list. You've probably got thousands of patients that you haven't been in contact with that uh, have been your patients in the past. Um, and it might not even, you might not even invite them back for the same thing that they came in for the first time. So just because they maybe came in for, um, you know, a musculoskeletal problem doesn't mean that weight loss, for example, isn't on their agenda as well. Um, your colleagues' databases. Obviously, you can regularly go to other people and say, look, I'm running this workshop on this topic. As long as it's not sort of in direct competition to a colleague, they'll often be very happy to promote it for you. JVs or joint ventures with other health-related out outlets. So things like health food shops, gyms. Uh, Peter Mills does local gyms. That's his main source of uh, his seminar pay uh, attendees. Look at where else your avatar clients spend money in order to fix their problem. So how else are they... What else are they doing in order to get this thing better? And then go to those people and say, look, how about we collaborate here? And, uh, you know, put the invitations out through them. And finally, look at the thinking actually, but other business databases. So who else do your clients shop with? So um, oh, my client Rosa in Sydney the other day went to a local cafe and a local hairdresser and organised a great workshop on um, fatigue and adrenal fatigue through the local cafes and, and again, filling little workshops up. So there's how you find an audience, JV and doubling on, piggybacking on databases effectively. Very, very simple. Um, and look, just to add some credibility to this, but I've been doing this for 11 years now for, for myself and I know it works. This has been the only thing I've done. So this is really very lucrative. A couple of highlights for me were, once I did a, a webinar, we were living in Bali a few years back, uh, that netted, you know, 70 odd thousand dollars worth of, um, coaching income for me, you know, from a from a chalet thing in, in Ubud, which is pretty cool. And the biggest one I ever did was, you know, in advance of 300K in 2010. So, the, and I'm not going to say everyone's going to rush out and do that, and I haven't replicated that over and over and again, I'll be honest. Um, you know, some of them have landed flat, others have done really well. But the fact is, it's a, a method of attracting clients and putting the word out and really making an impact that is, in my view, second to none. So let's recap. There's a bonus section I promised you at the end. I'm conscious of everyone's time. I realise that um, you know, you've got a, you're, on, you're probably in the middle of your work day. But your feedback, which I appreciate, everyone got back to me with lots of great, great feedback. But most people need more exposure in the marketplace. So better marketing, people need to, you know, they want people to know what they do. And they need more A-class clients who are more compliant um, and make them, you know, get better referrals and so on. And they need more income, but ideally with less effort. You know, so more time for money leverage. That were the, the big things that everyone was asking for. And there was a bunch of others as well. But now you know that to do this, there's a few key things to do. You know, number one was work on your business, study your craft, and don't do it by yourself. You should, growing a practice is something you need to work on and learn just as much as you need to get further qualifications as a practitioner. Secondly, you create signature protocols and start enrolling people in these protocols as a standard procedure and then thirdly start presenting from stage or webinar even if it's something you've never done before to create authority or reckon to be have your authority recognized is a better way to put it and engage new prospective clients so as with everything there's a hard way to do this or an easy way to implement now when you decided to go become a doctor or a physio or a or a naturopath, whatever you are, you didn't rush, you didn't go and sort of invent your own modality in order to treat patients. You went and studied it and learnt it. So again, use a formula to grow your practice as well and learn, learn from this. So don't, don't blunder along on your own. One of the things I've realised is that my highest leverage, of acti highest leverage activity in, in context of this mission I've had for these years, and you know, the, the, by the way, I don't expect I'm going to do this single-handedly, but I, I want to play my part in empowering practitioners to see this shift towards you know, preventative health and personal responsibility happening. So I want to work towards the tipping point where it becomes a norm rather than um, the exception. And my highest way to help that, the best way I can make that happen is to partner up with uh, a group of leading practitioners to help them create authority, get their message out on stage and put large numbers of patients in front of them at webinars and seminars, but also, and then obviously into their clinic. So that's, that's the number one skill I can offer. And to do it, I want to partner up with people. And this is what I'm offering here and suggesting. 
This is a three-month opportunity. It starts in early February 2018, so it's a, it's a way to kick the year off next year with a, a really big bang, and make it a, a really a watershed year for your practice and for your impact. Um, it's only really suitable if you're serious about letting me help you put on at least one event or seminar, preferably, or, or a webinar, I should say, preferably quite a few of them, but at least one. And, and as long as you're happy to get your message out to as many people as possible in that time, I'd like to see you go impact at least 100 extra people in 12 months. And go out and make a minimum of an extra 15 grand or more in the next few months from doing exactly this. That's It's got to be your commitment to it. And I'll give you, uh, as, as part of my commitment is, We've got an opportunity for you. I'll teach you to promote and present your own web webinars or seminars. Um, I'll teach you how to create and help you fine tune this unique signature protocol, and I'll help you get this extra 15 grand a year in bonus revenue. Plus, show you how to do highly leveraged groups group consults. So there's three components to this partnership. Number one is the training. Here is basically you're going to walk out of this training ready to present a webinar or a seminar. It's Three days in Brisbane in the first, uh, the third, fourth, and fifth of February. You need to get to Brisbane for it. Um, it's basically an implementation weekend where you will actually walk out with the work done. You'll have your, your slides created, your signature protocol created. You'll have a JV and an audience uh, booked ahead. You'll actually have that booked in whilst at the weekend. We'll do it together. Um, you create webinar invitations. You create event promotion while you're there. We'll teach you the te technology you need if you want to do webinars. And importantly, we'll show you really how to craft your transition and practice your clothes. You'll walk out of that with about 90% of everything done and all it takes is for you to actually get up and start. You'll need to fine tune a few things and get on stage and start. That's the first part. So it's a three days in February. The second part comes in as a form of support for the next three months after that. So for February, March and April, um, there'll be weekly help and accountability and feedback from me via a private Facebook group and you'll have 24 other or 23 other people around you sharing the journey. So you won't be doing this on your own. Um, you know, I've, I've had a lot of experience in helping people make this happen. And I know that just doing the workshop, you know, well intentioned as people get, doesn't work. So I'm including the support with it as well uh, to keep you on track. And I'm going to give you the tools to make it happen. So the tools are my personal swipe files, I call them. Uh, and you can use these as you fit, see fit for your own, present, your own presentation, including all my PowerPoints, including all the, like the Mabali webinar. You can use that. You can have it. You can chop it, change it, do what you want, but you can, you can use it piecemeal if you prefer. Um, you can use my event invitations, email sequences, landing pages, enrollment forms, saving you literally years of wasted effort. And, and most of these things are very easy to adjust and, and adapt to um, your signature protocol and your particular modality. So they're the three things you need. They're the three things I'll give you. Um, the partnership, and I'll tell you why it's a partnership in a second, but look, three months worth of coaching, you know, I've, it's 30 grand a year is my last batch of clients. So three months is $7,500. Um, the swipe files are invaluable, and they're past the event sold for two and a half grand on its own. That was in 2013. But if you, if you want to choose to partner with me on it, total investment, from your point of view, will only be 2497 my investment is my commitment to making sure you create at least 15 grand in the next in the new in new business in that period. But this is the thing, right? Um, webinar only offer is that if you want to bring this down to 997, secure the training today. What that'll cover is everything I've just described: the three months coaching, the support, all the swipe files, the implementation workshop, and you can apply now at this tiny URL that. Um, It'll take you through to an event right page and I'll bring that back up again in a second but bring that if you want to apply for that and this is the deal I put to you as a partner all right and I mean it as a partnership because number one I guarantee that the business training you do with me that first three days is you're going to walk out 100% satisfied that you can go out and make the presentation and make the 15 grand that I've told you or and in fact just make sure that it's been the best three days business training you've ever had or just tell me I'll give you your money back Right? So you've got nothing to lose, you turn up and do it, and if you're not 100% buzzing with the excitement of it and how much it's been back worth to you, take your money back, it's, it's fine with me. Okay. Second of all, and this is where the partnership takes place, is that once you've attained this 15 grand outcome from using the training, then you pay me the remainder of the partnership fee. So I said it's 2,497, you pay me the 1,497 only after you've made 
15, 15,000 or more. And some of you are going to do a lot more than that. But on a, and that's an honour system, but that keeps me accountable to make sure that um, we're going to do it together. Any reason you don't make the money, you owe me nothing further. So you really can't lose, it's a win-win. Um, and you can even take care of that initial 997 in three instalments over the three months, and it'll you put down 3.32.30 today, and that'll um, secure it for you. If you want to save an extra 100 bucks, I'll give you this uh, discount, you can pay it up front for 897. Backed by the double win guarantee, you'll need to apply by typing in this URL, which is tinyurl.com slash y8gydbca. I'll put it up again at the end for those, but you need to type that into your browser to take you through a new event, event right page to get it. Um, I'm not doing this outside of today's webinar. It goes back to the normal price after this. So if you want to do it, today's the day to do it on the back of the webinar. And there's only, there's 24 spots. Some are already booked already. I'm not sure how many. The majority, the majority is still available because we're just offering it today. Um, but it will fill up quickly. So it's 24 spaces only. Now, into the bonus section, I promise you. And this is a business hack, if you like. Um, this is the new term, you know, we're hacking our way to things. Excuse me. Um, by offering protocols, leveraging your consult time by up to 12 times with really very little additional effort. Um, John and Gary, uh, most of you, John's on the webinar here with us today. Most of you guys know, or you maybe here through, you're here attending this through the invitation these guys put out for us, created what we call, what they call SMAs or shared medical appointments. Now, in a nutshell, um, it's, it's all the benefits of a one on one consultation with a provider but with other patients in a room, up to six or 12 consenting patients, all with similar concerns. So um, basically a new way of delivering, uh, particularly around chronic disease management, all right? Um, the, the objectives are to lower the healthcare costs for the patients, uh, improve outcomes, patient satisfaction, engagement with patients and providing peer group support, um, and really giving you, as a practitioner, time for money leverage. Now, it's being trialled, as you said, in the medical space, but also with allied health. Um, by the way, you know, Europe and USA, this has been running for some time and getting exceptional results, um, and running in Australia for the last few years, primarily on trial basis, been getting exceptional outcomes. Um, you know, this is what I always look at, is that most of the people who do, most of the patients would actually prefer the SMA to an individual consult. GPs who are doing it actually love it because they get this level of personal satisfaction out of it rather than just doing patient after patient. And of course, they're getting, you know, 12 people at a time rather than one at a time. Um, and so the efficiencies are just perfect. And by the way, you don't need to be the one delivering all of it. It can be your support staff who deliver a fair chunk of it. And this is what people are saying about it. So the feedback is fantastic. Um, it really fits in. I only met John recently and Gary recently, and it fits in perfectly with what I've been saying for years about developing, uh, de delivering in protocols. And then, you know, if you can do it as a group, if you can deliver as a group, it's even better. So this is a really high leverage way of delivering uh, chronic disease management. Uh, the, the model's working well, not only in privately built, uh, well, not only with GPs, but with privately built sessions with um, uh, chiros, psychologists are using it, physios are using it, osteos. It really creates this unique offering in the market um, and you know it's an additional revenue stream in your practice. If you've got some downtime in your practice or there's space there where you could do this and it could be happening after work or lunch times or whatever, <coughs> excuse me, this is just like a golden opportunity from anyone in the health in the healthcare space in my opinion. Even better, the guys have created um, pre-done protocols that you can follow, like slideshows and all the, all the materials on how to facilitate these SMAs over the period um, for varying types of chronic disease. So in, initially we've got uh, weight loss and weight loss for men, weight loss for women, and they're things you can actually use so that you don't even have to invent the protocol, it's invented for you if you're gonna follow the one for weight loss. And there's more coming around diabetes and um, I think adrenal fatigue and a bunch of others. So. From my point of view, it's one of the best innovations in healthcare delivery I've ever seen as a business coach. I was really excited to come across it. I've actually helped doctors implement it um, already and had some amazing results with it. It's a perfect thing to offer at your events. It can be a, a signature protocol on its own. You know, this can take the place of a signature protocol on its own or 
um, it can be an adjunct to your current protocol. So it can be a real value add to your current protocols. And if you're not catering to chronic disease management already, this is like a bolt on into your practice. Right? So it's, you know, all the training on how to deliver it, how to get better people and get results for patients is included. I'm going to include, and I've talked to the guys, we're going to include the SMA training, which is 440 bucks. You can go and do it, like run it separately. You can do that with the guys individually through uh, ASLAM, Australian Society of Lifestyle Medicine. Um, but I'm, we're going to include this in the partnership opportunity I've said. So what the, the offer I put up earlier, uh, we're going to actually include a day of training with SMAs because I feel it's just the most significant thing you can do um, the two things go go together so well that I think it's it's silly to exclude it. So that's included. So there's an extra bonus there for you. So that's to recap. That's what you need. Everything you need to uh, present your own successful health seminars and webinars. Uh, everything you need to create and know how to enrol clients in your signature treatment protocol. Everything you need to deliver these highly leveraged group SMA consults and create an extra fifteen grand or much more. Uh, it's nine nine seven paid in three instalments. So three thirty two. 30 or it is up front not 50 um, and we'll spend the next three first three months of next year together to apply go to this tiny URL there it is in bigger type for you and with that guys so you'll need to go to your browser with that one and type it in um, we are now at our cutoff time and ready for question time um, I'm just going to say one or two things to recap and for, why do you, uh, sorry by the way why you ask questions is typing into the question box and I'll have to figure out the webinar, um, the tech on how to make sure I'm seeing everybody's there, but type them into your box and I'll go through some questions with you. Um, just to finalise, I just want to say, like, I, you know, we're in a chronic disease crisis in this country and I, as I said, I believe you guys are the ones that can change that. Um, if, if you really want to make a difference, if you want to get up and have an impact on that, um, join us in the partnership. Like, it's, this is a way that you can go out and become a, a known authority in your community and in industry um, and really make a big difference at, at the same time to you, both your bottom line and to your personal satisfaction. So I'd love to be part of that with you. Um, but either way, uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed sharing this with you. I hope this has been incredibly useful. And we'll now go to questions. So I want to go, sorry, did that wrong. Make sure I've got this right. And, uh, Go to the Q and A's. Okay, so questions coming through. Ah, uh, will it? Is it? Will it only be on in February? Yeah, the training will be on uh, the third, fourth, and fifth of February, and not sure if we'll do it again. No, don't. Well, my, prob probably at some point, but this may be a different price point, maybe a different offer. Um, what if I'm in a rural area? Well, we found that, as I said, with um, Graham Taylor, for example, rural areas can actually be really, really effective with, this, with these things, um, can actually work better because there's not as much competition. So definitely, and webinars really, you know, you can deliver a lot of stuff in a webinar. People, if they know an authority, um, an authority that can help them, People will travel for, so don't rule out the fact that patients will come and visit you and travel to see you. Um, the one question I had was uh, a couple of people asked me up front, can we do it in Sydney? And at some point, yes, down the track maybe, but I would suggest get on board with this one. Again, we'll probably, um, probably change the price point on this whole training when it comes down to, after this initial time. There's a couple of people saying, I'm just starting out on in practice. Is this appropriate? So uh, get new people on board. So yeah, um, look, yeah, I think, you know, whether you just, if you've been doing, if you've been in practice 30 years and you, you know, know your stuff inside out, this, this works well. And if you're just starting out, it also works well. Why not start out as the authority? There's a, there's a great saying I was taught years ago uh, by an old coach of mine who said, an organism that is, the same size or smaller than you will feed back according to your its beliefs about you. But an organism much bigger than you will feed back according to your beliefs about you. In other words, if you say I'm an expert and I'm an authority in something and go and tell your mum and your 
sister-in-law and you know the person next door they tend to go oh, yeah but no you're not you're just you just add them you know just we know who you are they, they give you their beliefs about yourself but if you launch yourself to a wider audience you know put a, you know invites out so putting a seminar on um you'll find that people accept that you're an authority by the fact that you put yourself out there as an authority um phil's asking are there any affordable accommodation options you know in brisbane yeah phil where we're going to run it is likely to be at a place called mercy place which is a it's actually a convent believe it or not in um in uh Barden in brisbane and they do accommodation there <clears throat> the reason we do it there is it's sort of easy there's some nice hotels but some budget accommodation around at the place itself there's accommodation for about 35 bucks a night something in that range it's 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 cheap and cheerful but it's a nice venue and you're right up in the top of mount kutha it's beautiful so yeah there is Yeah, cool. Um, so I'm just still figuring out how the Q&A box <laughs> works on this one, guys. Um, John's asking, what if you're already speaking from stage? Is this appropriate? Yeah, look, I, well, it depends if you're converting or not. You know, like I said, if, you, if you're speaking and you're not converting, um, you know, in my point of view, there's an argument to say you're not doing the right thing by your audience. Give them something to convert into and give them a, a path forward. So um, we can certainly uh, speed up the process of converting people. So I see there's a bunch of people jumping onto the URL now and joining the event, which is awesome. Uh, welcome guys, it's gonna be super cool. Have you along. Um, this is my favorite thing to teach, by the way, guys. I just love seeing people get up on stage and present because I love the leverage in it, I love the results it gets. Um, I love the personal growth journey that goes with it for people because there is this level of you know, really owning your authority is a, is a really powerful thing to do. So it's pretty cool. Um, and a couple of people saying, can I email me the URL to sign up? Yes, I will actually do that now, guys. I think the questions are dying off. So I'll email everyone the URL so that you've got it and you can click on there because um, I know it's kind of a funny one, this little tiny URL. I only made it small because the long, the long version was much longer. Um, Cool, any other questions before we wrap up for the day? I know you're all probably rushing back to work now. Uh, okay, cool. So guys, um, thank you all for attending and uh, I have thoroughly enjoyed sharing with you. Looking forward to seeing some of you joining up now to the partnership, um, really working together in the next few months and next year to kick some serious goals together. Um, and uh, thank you all for having me. Look forward to seeing you again.